By this time, political reforms in Eastern Europe had already allowed borders to open up. Only the German Democratic Republic maintained a hard line. But now, East Germans could escape to the West by travelling through Hungary or Czechoslovakia to Austria, where they claimed political asylum. Meanwhile, in East Germany, peaceful demonstrations put pressure on the government. On the 9th of November 1989, at a press conference in East Berlin, the East German press secretary, Gunter Schabowski, accidentally read out a draft press release he shouldn't have. The assembled journalists were quick to realise what the text actually meant, and within hours, TV and radio were wrongly reporting that the Berlin Wall was open. By nightfall, Crowds of East Berliners had gathered at the Bornholmerstrasse border crossing, taking the guards by surprise. They'd had no orders, but because of the crush, started letting people through. As they did so, they stamped their passports. What the people at the time didn't know was that their passports had been cancelled, the intention being not to allow them back again. But the crowds kept coming, and the guards feared a riot which would have resulted in many casualties. Eventually, half an hour before midnight, Oberstleutnant Harald Jäger, faced with an impossible situation and with no help from his superiors, opened the border completely, allowing everyone to pass at will. By midnight, all the crossing points were open. The Berlin Wall had fallen. November the 9th isn't celebrated as it also happens to be the date of the Nazi pogroms against the Jews. Instead, the date of political reunification, October the 3rd, is celebrated as a national holiday. The wall was gone, the Second World War officially ended, Germany no longer being occupied by foreign powers, and the long and difficult process of rebuilding began. David Bowie's song, Where Are We Now?, opens with these lines. Had to get the train from Potsdamer Platz. You never knew that, that I could do that. This is a reference to the fact that when Bowie was in Berlin, Potsdamer Platz S-Bahn station was one of the ghost stations located directly under the death strip. Now, the station has been reopened and the whole Potsdamer Platz and Leipziger Platz area completely redeveloped, a process only now coming to an end. This was once Berlin's busiest square, as symbolised by a modern copy of Germany's first set of traffic lights. Almost nothing of Potsdamer Platz survived the war and the building of the wall. Only some small fragments of the Hotel Esplanade, one of Berlin's most famous hotels during the Golden Twenties, survived and are now integrated into the ultra-modern Sony Center. This wasn't intended. The architects hadn't been told these remains were under a protection order and assumed they could simply pull them down. When this wasn't possible, to avoid having to redesign the new building, they got permission to physically move the Kaiser's Hall 75 meters from its original position. The 
With reunification, Berlin regained its status as Germany's capital city and the Bundestag prepared to move from its seat in Bonn. A new government quarter had to be built. An area just to the north of the Reichstag had been demolished by the Nazis to make way for an overdimensioned People's Hall, with only the Swiss Embassy remaining. This was the perfect spot to build new government buildings. These symbolically span the river Spree, where it used to form part of the border between East and West Berlin. The Chancellery, by the way, is the official office and residence of the German Chancellor, who is head of government. As is normal in European countries, the head of state is a different person. The German president, whose role is largely ceremonial, lives and works at nearby Schloss Bellevue, a much older building dating from the 1780s. Instead of rebuilding a number of terminuses, a brand new central train station was built where the main elevated east-west line crosses the new underground north-south line. With 300,000 passengers a day, it is Germany's fourth busiest station. One or two aspects of East Germany have survived reunification. The traffic lights are an example. The generic West German stick figures were never regarded with as much fondness as East Germany's red and green men, and by popular demand they continue to be used and even fitted to new traffic lights. They're also probably the only traffic lights in the world with their own merchandising. As well as the obvious, more profound changes are taking place. Rents and property prices are rising. Many of the formerly bohemian areas of Berlin are slowly becoming gentrified, much to the disgust of some residents. But Berlin has always seen rapid change and upheaval. It's always had a certain slightly subversive edge, and as long as that isn't lost, the future is probably, on balance, good. Don't stop, 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 don't stop
don't, 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 don't stop.